Welcome to your weekly US news update. And today we've got four things that I wanna cover. The first one is the FAA that added limitation and restrictions on drone operation over certain military facilities. The next thing I wanna talk about is Kitty Hawk that's going to introduce the Lens 2.0, their new version of their software. I wanna talk about a new anamorphic lens that is gonna be available for Mavic uh, series air, uh, drones. And, uh, and I'm gonna talk about all the details on that. And then the last thing I wanna talk about is something we talked about last week and a few weeks before that, which is the DJI government edition. Um, this has actually been approved by the US Department of Interior. So let's get started. Let's talk about the F-8, establish restrictions on drone operation over additional military facilities. I've talked about this before in one of the new segments uh, where the F-A had established uh, you can fly over military vessels in certain areas of the country. Well, the FAA on July 11th, 2019, they've added to the list. And uh, you can find all the information in the NOTAM. It's called FDC 8-3277. And basically what the NOTAM says is that there's no flying between the surface and 400 feet AGL. Okay, and they've added 12 new uh, restricted locations. I'm gonna have the list right here so you can see where they are. And um, the, the, the good news is if you wanna see where uh, you can't fly anymore because of these restrictions, these are found on the UAS facility map. So if you look right here, you can see an example of one of them. And here's another one right here in Utah. And uh, these restrictions are pretty clearly explained right here. And if you click on the details, you can see all the information. So I'll put a link in the, uh, at the bottom so you can see the NOTAM and so you can also see see the FAA news updates. But if you live in one of those areas, one of those locations or close to it, let us know if this is going to affect you. I want, I want to hear if these, uh, these areas are something that maybe you've been flying into and now you can't. So let me know in the comments. Next thing I want to talk about is Kitty Hawk. Kitty Hawk is a lens provider in the US and they're introducing a new version of their uh, lens software. Now what's new in this new version is the fact that this is now available for Android. This has been a big complaint from a lot of people that have Androids and not iPhone or, or iOS devices. Now they can actually use it with Android. So that, I think that's a very big step for Kitty Hawk. They're gonna get a ton more um, users because of that. Also, what Kitty Hawk has done is they brought back the fact that you can create an approval in advance in their software up to actually 90 days. Now, this is kind of a big deal. Um, you may have remembered, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago, or actually a couple of months ago now it was, when, um, the, uh, when Josh Zeering, who's the founder of Kitty Hawk, had come up and said that they were not going to approve uh, authorization in advance and uh, that it was actually a little bit safer to do it uh, the day off. A lot of people actually argued online about this, and I'm on the, on the side that says that if you can do all the planning ahead of time, please go ahead and do so. This is much safer for operation. So I'm actually excited because um, Kitty Hawk listened to their customers and they're bringing this back. So now you can, again, submit these uh, re requests for Lance a couple of days in advance, up to 90 days in advance. Personally, what I would do is the day before, I would go in there, I would check all the information, check the NOTAMs, check the TFRs, make sure nothing is up, and then submit my request. And again, on the morning of the operation, check the NOTAMs, check the TFR, check the weather, obviously, and then, and then go fly. But um, doing that planning ahead of time is, is, is critical, I think, to safe operation. So I applaud Kitty Hawk on this. I'm glad that they listened to the customers, and then this is available again. Now, also what they've added in 2.0 is the 100 new airports that the FAA announced last month. This is also something I covered in the news segment. Now we have up to 600 airports that are LANS approved, which is great. Uh, the, the LANS program, I can't say enough how good it is and, and how, um, how much of a change it's made in the daily operation. I remember my first request was uh, 11 months to get approval to fly in class Delta airspace here in Prescott. So. Um, Another thing that they've added that I don't have a use for, but maybe you do, is you can actually submit requests through airspace that touches two different airports. So if you're flying in the same airspace that is uh, on two different airports, or two different airspace, I should say, that are, that are across different airports touching each other, then you can do that through the system now. So I'll put a link in the description. You can see the, um, the changes and you can see the press release. Uh, I think it's good news. And um, if you don't know how to submit Lens request, I have a video, I'm gonna put a link uh, up here so you can see it and click on it. Uh, I will do a new one when hobbyists are able to submit Lance requests. So you can see what it looks like from a hobbyist standpoint and from a, uh, a remote pilot standpoint. So stay posted with that. 
Tell me, do you use Kitty Hawk? Is this something that is going to um, help you? Again, what do you think of these changes? And also, um, did you use Kitty Hawk in the past and then switch to another provider because you couldn't submit requests ahead of time? And if so, are you gonna come back? Is this something that is a selling point for you? So let me know in the comments and, um, and then I'll, I'll uh, engage with you and talk about this. Next thing I wanna cover is a new anamorphic lens for the Mavic series. Now this is kind of a big deal. Uh, anamorphic lenses, for those of you that are not familiar, they're the lenses that are gonna make your footage look very cinematic. If you see uh, a drone shot, or if you see actually just a ground shot uh, from a movie where everything is nice and wide, you've got these uh, little bars on the top. Well, um, these lenses allow the footage to be stretched a little bit, make it more widescreen. And what this creates is just a, a much more appealing look. Now, lenses that are usually, um, anamorphic lenses are usually pretty expensive. And uh, this company is called Moment Air, and Moment Air is creating an anamorphic lens for the uh, Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom. And these will be available on Kickstarter. So you can actually go on Kickstarter and, uh, and buy it right now. It's $199 instead of the $299 when the com campaign is gonna be over. And uh, this cover weights about 50 grams and it clips all around the gimbal. I'll put a picture so you can see what it looks like. It's expected to ship in November of 2019. They've already met the goal for uh, the funding. So that's kind of a uh, great news. Not gonna lie, I got one and uh, I'll be reviewing it as soon as I get it. Um, I think it's exciting. I think it's gonna provide a different look and um, just something that makes your footage a little bit better. The last topic I wanna talk about today is the DJI Government Edition. The last thing I wanna talk about today is the DJI Government Edition that has been approved by the US Department of Interior. This is kind of a big deal. Uh, this has been in the news for several weeks now. Uh, first, the, um, the, the, the government uh, decided that they could not use DJI products anymore because of uh, concerns of where the data was going. So DJI kind of replied and said, hey, listen, we're gonna create this thing called a Government Edition where uh, your data is staying on the device and not going anywhere else. So the Department of Interior decided to uh, uh, conduct a study to find out if this was true and if the data indeed stayed with the drone. So they've tested the uh, DJI Matrice 600 Pro and then the Mavic Pro that is equipped with the uh, government edition software. And um, the DJI said basically it's good to go. You can uh, uh, they basically approve the purchase of DJI drones for government work. And uh, there's a whole article, I'll put it at the bottom. I know it's coming from DJI themselves, but there's also a link to the report uh, from the DOI that you can go and see and read uh, all the information in there. Uh, basically what the bottom line is, is the data with this software edition stays where the drone is and does not leave the control of the operator, which was the biggest concern uh, of this whole process. So uh, my question to you is, we've had actually a discussion on the previous video about this. Um, are there any concerns still? Do you think this is um, still a, a, a bias from DJI? Or do you think that this study from the, the government is actually uh, helping you feel better about this process? I know for me personally, it does. I think this is, uh, this is kind of the answer that a lot of people have been waiting for. So let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, keep it civil. You guys have been doing really good with the comments. I, I really enjoy um, interacting with you as well outside of just doing these videos. So uh, keep them coming. It's, uh, it's really exciting. And this is it. This is all I have for today. Uh, remember, in the next couple of weeks, there is an FA seminar coming up on Lance. Make sure that you sign up for it if you haven't already. You can see the video from last week. I put a link at the bottom uh, where you can go and register. So uh, also, I want to say a uh, shout out to the FA drone guy, Kevin. Uh, he actually uh, reached out on Twitter and said that he would share the information that I shared in this video. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I think this is great. Uh, I love the fact that the FA is helping um, to educate all the drone pilots out there. I've been working with the FAA my, my whole career uh, from the flight training side in the past, and I'm excited that they're getting involved with this. So uh, keep up the good work uh, if you're watching this one, and, uh, and hopefully we can maybe even do something in the future where, uh, where I, can, uh, I can help spread the word and, and help the FAA. So that's it. Um, as always, like and subscribe. Uh, the subscriber list is almost at 500. We're, we're adding people every single day. So this is exciting. If you haven't done it yet, just subscribe. You'll get a nice little notification when I create new videos. And um, this is it for today. Have a great weekend.